This is a show that brings to the forefront newsmakers, entertainers, and those making a difference in our lives and in our world. Each week is a new adventure with topics ranging from the most serious and cutting edge to the most lighthearted and entertaining. This is Taking Care of Business with Richard Solomon. Richard Solomon, I want you to just, just listen for a minute. Whenever there's a great new intro song, you know there could be something very special on today's show. So hang on for that second. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. So, whenever there's new music, the question is, who's in the studio this week? So, so I don't know if you know who that was because we don't have a call in right now. But, but if your answer was Jay Jacobs, then then, then you you guessed right. So, welcome to our station. Thank you very much, Richard. I, it's a pleasure to be here with you. All right. So, I'm looking at an album called Between Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. So I guess that would be today. <laughs> well, it kind of like uh, encompasses uh, all three uh, time periods. All right. Now, this is a very interesting album. This is uh, Jay, Jay Jacobs, but you, you're known as Jay Cobb. Yeah, they call me Jay Cobb or Cobb or J.C. Cobb. All right. And your website is CobbsCabin.com. Yep, that's okay. right. All right. So this is, uh, this is, I guess, this is the current album, uh, mm-hmm. Between Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. And it's got, we're going to play some great songs. Now, we had, we, we, we had very interesting circumstances in which we actually met because we didn't we really didn't know each other. Right. So so we're at my father's place at the Roslyn Hotel, and there's a television show being taped. Oh, oh leak of information. Oh, watch out. <laughs> oh, how, how, did, how did they get that past the censors? Anyway, uh, we're taping a TV show, and one of the great things that I get to do is I get to tap the shoulder of the people who are either performing or about to perform, warming up, and I go, would you like to come back to the studio and then really play your hearts out, you know, bring the, the music, bring the CDs, and let's let's really get into some stories. So, of course, Jay was just gracious enough to come in, and so we're really grateful that he's here. Um, he's got a, a, a large category of music. I'm actually looking at um, an album called J.C. Cobb East East Coast Cowboy, an American original, except no substitute. So that's something we'll <laughs> look at. I got some, uh, I guess, demos uh, that we'll talk about, which are kind of cool. Uh, the demo that I'm holding here is, and her name is Anna. Oh, yeah. And I understand there's some interesting stories behind all this music. Oh, you bet there are. And then one of the songs that I really want to play is going to be called The Ghost of 17B. So uh, this is all exciting stuff. So, all right. So... <clears throat> So you've been around a while. How did it start? Where did it start? Well, uh, it all depends. If you want to go back to when I was two years old, uh, we could go that far back when I sang the, the ballad of Davy Crockett at the Bungalow Colony. Okay. <laughs> um, the, my parents used to take us uh, up to the Catskills every summer. So uh, it started there. Um I got interested uh, in music because my family is, is musical. My, right. my, my uncle... My uncle, uh, Jules, we called him Julie, uh, he was a professional drummer, uh, and he played up in the Catskills, what, what they commonly called the Borscht Belt. Uh, he played the hotels there when they were in their uh, heyday, I guess you would call it. And uh, I kind of inherited his drum set when I was 12 or 13 years old. I actually started on the drums. Now... Uh, we lived in an apartment, a garden apartment in uh, northern Queens in a, a town called Whitestone. I grew up in Whitestone. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. There must have been Clearview, Clearview, Clearview Gardens. Gardens. There That's you right. go. Exactly. So then you must have known the Clearview Bakery. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Everybody did. Yeah, yes. we'd go there Sunday. and Get, and get the rye get, bread and the onion board. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we, I'd walk there with my dad. We'd get the rolls and everything we'd, and come back and have a nice breakfast. Um, but... Um, 
what were we talking did, about here? Did, uh, we, clear your gardens. Did, did, yeah. So, so now what, what happened was we, we had this garden apartment. We were on the, uh, the, the upstairs. And uh, I was playing drums. My, my mom encouraged me. Okay. The neighbors hated it. Okay. Of course. So my mom, she got a, an idea. I didn't find this out till years later. She bought a guitar for my father's birthday. Now, my father, he had a pretty good voice. He could sing pretty well, but he couldn't play anything. I bought him a, a chromatic harmonica once. He blew a few notes, put it in his drawer, and that's where it stayed for the next 12 years. Uh, but she bought a guitar for my dad, knowing that I would probably pick it up, which I did. And um, the drums didn't fall by the wayside because I kept a set uh, almost throughout my entire life. I've always, always had a drum set or pieces of drum sets. I still have a cymbal or two from my uncle's original set. But that's how I started playing guitar uh, with that uh, nylon string guitar that my mom bought for my father. And uh, one thing led to another. And then you know, I turned around 14 years old and I was still playing drums in a, and in a band, too. As a matter of fact, uh, the name of my band was called The Town Criers. And my bass player, Dennis, who I knew back then, he was in uh, a rival band called uh, The Grim Reapers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we, you know, we would do the Battle of the Bands. And uh, they were actually better than us, to be perfectly honest. But everybody had a good time. And uh, Dennis is, uh, we've been playing off and on for, oh, Lord, I mean, close to 45 years plus. Uh, and he's currently uh, uh, the bass player in the Cobb's Cabin Band. And he's uh, not only a terrific uh, bass player, a totally a total pro, but he's a, a dear friend, one of my oldest, dearest friends as well. Was he from Whitestone too? Yeah, he lived a block away from me. So we. So we, we, what, what block were you on? I was on 16th Avenue off 160th, and, and he was uh, off the 17th Avenue, I think, and 160th. Okay, so you probably remember on 16th Avenue and like 200th was a little tomato farm. The little tomato farm with a horse. Yeah, and it was there I until do about remember. 1970. I do remember. Yeah. And then you'll probably also remember the milkmaid, which is which was where which Francis is, Lewis was. And it's a McDonald's. It's a McDonald's now. now yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I had Johnny Rulo in the studio, who's also from basically Whitestone, uh -huh. and he wrote a song when he was a kid called "The Milkmaid Blues." <laughs> so maybe you guys need to collaborate <laughs> on songs from Whitestone. In fact, I did a show called "The History of Whitestone," so that's uh -huh. up on YouTube. So, so I'm looking at Cobb's Cabin Band, and I see a bunch of guys. Uh, that that look like they're they're at it from the old west. So um, just who's the guy that looks like John Entwistle? Is that Dennis? That's Dennis. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's you in the middle. And then who's to who's who's stage left? Uh, the other guitar player is Kurt Henry. He's a very well known and very talented uh, guitar player, uh, songwriter, singer from the Hudson Valley area, and he's the the newest member. And, then, and who do you have on drums back that's, there? Who, who you can't see that's, in the photo? That's Alan Thompson, uh, and he lives actually lives about three miles down the road from me. Now, uh, if I recall, is he the sound guy from yes, my he father's is. place? He set up the, <laughs> the entire sound system for, for the club. Right. So basically, it was Alex Ewan, mm -hmm. David Eng, and Alan. I think were the primary three guys that did the initial sound. You know, yep, that's right. And uh, David, uh, David is our manager slash producer. One of the cool things, da David, and David Eng and I have sort of this ongoing joke. Um, we take a selfie with all the musicians. <laughs> so you know, in ten years from now, we're going to just put up a gigantic wall of pictures of the two of us and like you know somebody else you know in the, from the world sure, of music. So great. we need to get we need to get a selfie with you. Oh yeah. Be glad to, sure. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Love David. Hey David, if you if you're listening. Hey Dave. You know, we love you. And uh, so how was the sound? How did it sound to you when you were there? Um you know, uh it it sounded um I guess it sounded Pretty well balanced. I could hear the the band behind me, uh, and the, uh, the the vocals I think were maybe a little more out front than I thought they would be. Uh, but um, the sound itself was fantastic. I mean, when I listen to the other bands, 
Uh, everything just sounded uh, clear. You can hear the vocals right out front. Um, the instrumentation, spot on. Uh, guitar guitar play went into a solo. You could hear every note, crisp, clean. Bass had a lot of presence uh, without being overwhelming. The drums were mixed in just perfectly. The, these guys, they know what they're doing. And that club, my father's place, that is a fantastic venue to see music. It's small enough to be intimate. Um, and the bands that they have coming in, these are like, you know, all all top acts, very talented people. Uh, the uh, the two bands that uh, were there uh, the same day we were, uh, Taz and uh, Laura Hope. Laura Hope and the Laura Arctones. Hope. Yeah, and the Arctones. They, they, were, they were just fantastic. And it was a real pleasure to listen to them. And uh, it's just a great, uh, great venue, great place to go and to, to, to have a night out. And they have food and drinks and uh, the whole nine yards. Look, for all those who are listening, I'm going to let you know a little secret. It may not be published right now, but I did get to interview Taz. Mm -hmm. I interviewed him upstairs um, in sort of like the the bar fireplace area, and and he's just a great guy. He's just a great, and he's going to have a phenomenal career. Very talented. And yeah. then I actually had uh, Lara Hope and the Arctones um, in sort of the green room area, mm -hmm. and we actually filmed that and recorded it. And they, they're great. Oh my God, they're, they're terrific. Great. Yeah. Uh, I think they're are they the ones who are opening for the Stray Cats. Yes, yes, they are on tour with the Stray Cats. Right. Straight so, cats, yeah. if if you're listening currently to that tour, they're they're opening for the Stray Cats. They are great. They are great, and they had um, there's there's a there's a, they they played this really great song, and I want to spoil it, but um, they recorded it and it was really really funny. And then in our interview, I asked them about it, uh, but it's just a great great song. Actually, the the, the song was, um, I loved you. I love you more today than yesterday because yesterday you really pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was that was a so because I wasn't sure if that was FCC compliant or not, and I found that it was. Um, I just said, "Remember that song where you said you upset me?" <laughs> so, but they they're great and they're funny and they're fresh and yep. alive and dynamic. Yeah, and, if you get a chance, uh, absolutely see know, them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. How did you get tapped for the TV show taping? Well, you know, David's involved with the club, and he's been uh, working with us for, um, you know, I guess, a year and a half, maybe, get, getting on two years. We've we've had, uh, you know, a couple of changes of personnel, and uh, he's been uh, sort of encouraging us and, uh, you know, giving us uh, tips on, on, on how to, uh, I guess— you know, get get the word out there. Um, you know, get we're, that social media buzz. Yeah, the social media thing. I mean, you know, we're we're not spring chickens here, but um, and the Clearview Bakery's closed. So you can't put a notice <laughs> up in the. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing the, is, by the you know that vibrating machine that cut the bread. You know. <laughs> oh, I remember that. The, 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 yeah, you'd see it you'd, with the fingers, <laughs> right? Yeah, but um, we we you know he's been uh, trying to encourage us to. Uh, Get the word out, and uh, you know, get uh, get onto social media, and that's um, why we're building the website. And uh, we're uh, my daughter, who's got a uh, my my lovely daughter Melissa has a her master's in communications, and she uh, teaches um, at the uh, university uh, in Bluffton of South Carolina, and uh, so she's going to be managing uh, the website once I. I I kind of get it constructed. Once you and, launch, like, yeah. like big time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she'll also be uh, working with Twitter. I think David is working with Instagram. And we just, you know, we want people to know we're out there and to come see our shows uh, as soon as we, uh, we get our schedule set. All right. So, David. We have to get the the selfie, all right. Just this is, and then we'll put that on the web with the show. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got pictures of David and my. No, phone, but it's yeah. it's funny because David has a collection of pictures of me and him mm -hmm. with some other person, and we, we we're doing them in succession. So essentially, what's going to happen is almost everyone who plays at my father's place will end up having a selfie with us. You know, That's during, great because you can the look you can look back and and there's the memories right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a great honor for me to interview all the great bands and artists. Uh, and musicians. All right, we have a couple of minutes before we take our break. So, what's a good song to f to to fade into the break with? What do you like to fade into the break with? Well, um, well, I want you to 
Uh, I got like three minutes. What we got? What's a good three minute song? Three minute song. It's an instrumental. It'd be uh, Melissa Real. It's kind of a ah, is that your daughter. I think. Yes, about your daughter? named after oh. my daughter. Yep. Right. Does she know this is about her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh she sure does. She's All right, so for all those people out there, this is track seven, the Melissa Real. Today is Jake Hobbs. You know, there's Jake Jacobs and Cobb's Cabin Band. You can go to Cobb'sCabin.com and uh, you can catch them hopefully soon on television. But don't tell anybody I told you. I'll be right back. Hey, this is Jeff Matson, the Dark Star Orchestra, and you're listening to Richard Solomon on WCWP 88.1 FM. That you can see that the PS2 man didn't do well in English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all those con- contractions in there. <laughs> talking about you. But then again, ain't talking about love was a gigantic song and you know, they didn't have Mrs. Strauss for English either. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's actually the way that people speak. They drop the G most of the time. So, so while, while we're listening to this song, this album between yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Tell me about the album, the artwork, uh, the imagery. There's some very interesting uh, ghost imagery in the back. Right. Well, well, which is probably the ghost of 17B. That's right. So, Actually, so who's the, the, the kind of the mysterious three or four dimensional looking couple? Well, that's that's me and the... Uh, the uh, the ghost actually. Um, the ghost stood still for you to take the picture. <laughs> no, I'll tell you one thing. That was one of the most chilling moments of my entire life. Tell uh, me, tell me. Well, uh, I was uh, I was with playing with a band uh, in Sullivan County at the time. This was 
the, 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 the month of the occurrence and year was May of 1974. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact date, but it was the third, third or fourth week of May. And uh, I had uh, just come from the rehearsal and uh, was heading back to Pennsylvania, which is the band uh, rehearsed in uh, White Lake, which is um, not far from where the, the original Woodstock uh, was held. And um, the, the, the house uh, that me and another band member rented was in Pennsylvania, right over the Delaware River, just uh, over the bridge. And uh, I, I had a motorcycle, and uh, that was my main mode of transportation in, uh, uh, back in those days. And so I was heading uh, down 17B, heading west. And um, anybody who's familiar with the road, there are some very, very long stretches that are steep. Steep going down, steep coming up. And you could see for a mile, maybe more, when you're at the, the crest of the, the top of one of these, uh, you know, ridges. Uh, and um, so it was uh, dark already, but uh, it, was, it was a very damp night. And there was, I could see a fog rolling across the road at the bottom. And I was still a long distance away. And as I approached, the fog... The only way I could put it is it, it, it came together, it coalesced, it formed a shape. And it was the shape of a woman. And it was the shape of a woman dressed uh, like, um, I guess, uh, 19th century? You know, with Definitely the, 1800s looking. 1800s yeah. with the bustle in the back of the dress. Uh, the, you, you could see that she was holding a muff. And she had a bun on, t you know, the top of hair. I could see all of this very clearly, but the, the one thing that was really eerie about it, aside from the whole thing, was that she was floating about a foot off of the, uh, the, pay, uh, off the roadway. And the other thing was she was moving opposite the direction the fog was rolling. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that was... Anyway, I, I, I'm... I'm approaching, and I, I'm seeing this thing, and I, my heart was hammering like uh, like a, a metronome. Uh, like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> like I've seen a ghost, yeah. And the thing is, though, that the, the, the strangest part of this was that uh, I felt like I was part of this, this um, tableau, if you will, uh, this occurrence. I was... I, I, I couldn't stop the bike if I wanted to. Uh, I didn't have a thought in my head. My brain froze. I swear to God, my brain froze in my head. And then uh, uh, I had one thought that occurred to me, and it was that when I passed this thing, the, the backwash of air from the bike was going to, you know, send a flying in all different directions, you know, like a fan blowing smoke. Well, I finally passed her. And nothing happened. She was as intact. Intact. Now, any change in temperature or anything? It, it was cold when I got down, and you know it, that that particular area was where the uh, road bottomed out, and there was kind of swampy land on either side. Now, just to be clear, there were two cemeteries. There are two cemeteries along this stretch, uh, one on uh, the south side, and uh, I think it's the south side, yeah, one on the south side, one on the north side. They're about a, maybe a mile or more, more apart. But I think that might be uh, relevant to this whole thing. But anyway, I got to the top of the hill, and I looked back, and she started to disperse, you know, like almost like taffy being pulled until mm -hmm. there was nothing left but fog. And, uh, you know, anybody hearing it uh, who's listening, who's never had this type of experience, yeah, 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 you're going to say, okay, right, okay, maybe, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Well, I did. And as God is my witness, I saw this thing. And I will never forget it. It, it changed my life because uh, I think once you, 
you see one of these things, a you, paranormal experience. Yeah, you you have no doubt anymore that these you know this exists. So, what it was, I couldn't tell you. All I can tell you is what I witnessed. And there's a pretty good picture of it. Uh, it took me three months to do the graphic art to get a, a likeness uh, of it. Uh, and I actually drove up to the area. That that picture uh, on the album that uh, I superimposed the figure is 17B. Now, this, this is this the cemetery in the background? Uh, it is, but it's it's again that's superimposed. It's a graphic, you know. Uh, right. Did you actually go and look at any of the cemetery markers? I did. Did did anything grab you as a potential candidate? Well, it's hard to say. You know, there's a lot of old markers there. Uh, I think some of them were dated seventeen something, eighteen something. Uh, it's hard to say, you know. Um, I just don't understand why, you know, something like that exists. And, you know, is it a spirit that's, you know, not at rest? You know, I speculate, I think, in the song. But that's all it is, is speculation. So let's talk about the song. Yeah. So you had this incredible experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's changed your life. Yeah. How has it changed your life? Um, do, you, do you believe more in the spirits? Do you, do you? I, I can't really tell you except that um, it's added another dimension, if you will, to my beliefs, the way I think, uh, what I think in terms of spirituality. Uh, I don't have any doubt anymore, you know. Uh, so, you know, there's a line by Jacob Dylan in the song One Headlight where he goes, he says something like, um, I, I, I know I haven't changed, but I know I'm not the same. Hmm. Is, is that something like, does that ring a bell in this experience? Well, I think... Uh, You're the same, but not really, but yes, you are? <laughs> well, you know, at the core, you know, we are whatever... We are, you know, we, we develop, we grow, we learn, uh, we change over the years. But I think the core, whatever it is that uh, our spirit is made of, stays the same. Um, our soul. Yeah. Our, our soul. Neshama. Yeah. 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 So uh, how does it change a person? It just adds, you know, something that wasn't there before. So... Have you ever been back to that yeah, area? Yeah, I have. I've gone back there uh, several times during that time of the month just to see if maybe I could, you know, if there would be a reoccurrence. And the few times I was there, uh, there wasn't. Did you do any research to see if there was any, you know, other people who had similar experiences, much like UFO sightings where maybe different people you know, sketch out sort of almost the same thing from different angles or? I, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't spoken to, you know, I didn't, uh, haven't lived in that area. I'm in Ulster County now. I haven't lived in Sullivan County since, uh, 1974 because I moved shortly after that. Uh, but about internet search engines, local newspapers, have you like just? Well, the, uh, the Catskills are known for, you know, supernatural paranormal uh things going on there there uh uh will of the wisps phantom lights um there's been sightings of uh in the sky uh you know it's hard to say there's there's also a, a strange phenomena that might still be visible in liberty it's uh, we used to call them the fingers but there's uh, at at sunset. I think it's in the west. You can see these clouds form that uh, they just kind of form out of nothing. There's been articles about those, uh, and they have sort of a sh cigar shape, and uh, they'll do that till um, you know till it gets dark and you can't see them anymore. I used to uh, I used to work in Grossinger's hotel when the I famous Grossinger's. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, the room that I had faced west, so I, I would I would actually see these things happening uh, nightly, and then uh, of course I had to go to the dining room and do whatever I did. 
you know, busing and cleaning up, that kind of thing. So let's talk about the ghost of 17B. Yeah. So you had this entire wild experience. Yep. How do you express it in a song? Uh, you know, with me, I don't generally craft a song. It, I like to say they write themselves. Um, I, I might have an experience and I'll, I'll just be sitting down and the whole thing will come out in a gush. Uh, in fact, uh, that happened about two weeks ago. I just wrote a new song, uh, which I think is a real killer. Uh, I'm still putting the finishing touches on it, but the band is go- going to start uh, rehearsing it this weekend. So I'm kind of excited about that. But um, the songs write themselves, you know, uh, like, for instance, um, the uh, sound check song we did, Sally Gonna Catch You. Um, I just sat, I was just up at the cabin. It was night. I had my guitar. I just wrote it. I just started playing the chords and then the, the lyrics just came. The whole thing was done, I think, in, you know, 45 minutes, two wow. hours, something like that. Uh, I think Elton John and Bernie Taupin say they, they write songs between, like, 15 and 30 minutes, and then they're done. You know? Yeah, it happens like that sometimes. I mean, it's possible to craft a song if you if you know music. You know, I could probably write, uh, uh, you know, songs and jingles and musical figures all day, but uh, that's... You know, that's not what I do. Uh, the songs, you know, they got to come. They I, gotta, think, I think Paul McCartney said they just, they're like in the clouds. You just pull them out. They are in the ether. Yes. They're always there. You can pull them out. All right. So shall we play the song? Yeah. All right. Like. Let's play that. So hang on, everybody. We'll play this, this song we've been talking about.
day Someone somewhere somehow can figure a way To ease her pain so she could move on And her soul could be at peace So that I pray Oh, I wish I could do something To ease her troubled soul So I'm singing this song So her story can be told Before you hit the crossroads this is Richard Salmon. We're listening to The Ghost of 17B with Jay Jacobs in the studio, also known as Jacob. Right Keep it locked in. We're having a great time learning all about great music and really supernatural events. She's the lady they call the ghost of 17B. I'm Sherman Arnowitz. I'm Mark Brenner. We're from Vista Hill. And you're, and you're listening, listening to Richard Solomon, Solomon on WCWP 88.1 FM. This is Richard Solomon. What's the name of this song? This is called And Her Name Is Anna. Anna Hank. She works at the grocery store. I see her there. And I want to ask her out. I'm a little scared. Because of my last lover tore my heart in two. Now I'm afraid to fall in love with someone new. Yeah. Her name is Anna, and I don't even know. I always watch people listening to their own music mm-hmm. in the studio. What was going through your mind right now when you were listening to that track? I was, <laughs> I was actually thinking of her. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, well, that's suppo- you're supposed it, to do that. It's, it's sort of like a bittersweet. Uh, what happened was I just moved into, uh, I sold my house and I uh, just moved into a neighborhood, a uh, different neighborhood. And so I found, uh, you know, one of these you know, groceries that um, is it's like special, you know. Specialty store? Of, yeah, well, f- like very healthy, but um, they got everything. You know, it's a chain. I don't want to mention it, but 
I came in, I think it was 8.30, and they close at 9. There were two registers working. One uh, was this guy, and he had one person online. And then I saw Anna, and she had three people on a line. Well, I went right on her line. The guy finished with his customer, and he, he says, okay, sir, you can come over here. And I said, no, I like it just where I am. And she looked up. I caught her eye. And when I got to the register, I, I struck up a conversation. You know, what are you going to talk about in a grocery store? We talked about food. But I did, I did put it out there. I said, well, you know, I'm a pretty good cook. I wouldn't mind cooking for you if you'd like. And uh, she kind of liked that, I think. And uh, She got hey, a song out of it. <laughs> well, see, now, that's the funny thing. I, I asked her out two more times, and, and, and I almost got a date out of it, but, but I didn't. But I did get a good song out of it. And uh, that's uh, one of the songs that the band is going to be recording on our next album. And that's actually a demo, but it's a pretty good demo, I think. So this is like a world premiere leak, you know, in a way. Yeah, uh, I suppose so. So this song, this song is now on, this is an FM broadcast amongst other platforms. So this is going to actually get out there. So Good. So this is a, a nice way to introduce the world to Anna, uh-huh. the, the human and the song. Ah, uh, lovely Anna. So yes. maybe we, maybe we could send her like an email that you know to listen to the show and, and <laughs> segment three she's up. <laughs> uh, well, this was a number of years ago. I don't even know if she still works at the place. I I see what happened was they opened up uh, another store which is really right across the street from where I work. So I really haven't gotten back there for a long time. Uh. All right, Anna, if you're listening, call us. Uh, <laughs> we have email at the station, the whole thing, and. Uh, you can always send me an email at radio at myfathersplace.com. So there you go. And then uh, we'll take that. So, so it's kind of funny how your personal life was really, really embedded in the songs. Yeah. You know, yeah your experiences, say- you know, the ghost of 17B and Anna, these are real tangible events. These aren't just like sitting around thinking about, you know, interest rate changes, the interest rate range change, change song or just something, you know, like far off. No, I, I think uh, unlike a lot of other people that write uh, uh, write songs about um, topical subjects or politics or uh, I don't know, you know, I, I don't have any particular leanings or bent when it comes to writing a song, I, like I like I said before, they seem to write themselves. You know, um, I think uh, you know most of these songs do have stories uh, attached to them. Um, are there even stories for the instrumentals? Yeah, there are. I mean, Melissa Real was I wanted to write something for my daughter, so I you know I just uh, kind of was picking, uh, and it that. It, turned into that pull off which is uh, the first uh, that's the song, song we opened up with yeah, yeah that's kind of some nice hot pick and i uh, i was trying to come up with some way to demonstrate uh, a technique called a pull off for my guitar students back in the i guess it was the early or mid 80s and i just kept working it and that came out of it and i think by 1986 i had uh, recorded a couple of different versions of it and uh, recently I found them on an old reel-to-reel uh, that, uh, that I have. And I was surprised. Uh, it was pretty good. It, it, are, are there songs that you've gone into the archives and have sort of dusted off and reinvented? Because uh, you now have a different perspective on that song. Um, or an enhanced appreciation for what it is. You know, I'm kind of working on that. I I recently uh, I recently cleaned out my closet, and I found a, a box of old cassette tapes, and there was some there was some good stuff there. Uh, some some very creative stuff, including the beginnings of a rock opera that I that I was writing. Uh, I listen to it. It sounds a little dated now, but there's some some good themes. And yeah, I might revisit some of those old tapes. Uh, in fact, Dennis and I were in a group. I think it was like 1978 or 79. Uh, it didn't last long. We did a couple of gigs. Uh, it fell apart. Um, but there were some very interesting songs. Some tongue-in-cheek stuff. Some almost zappet sounding stuff. And uh, 
And I'm going to give that a good listen because there might be some material there that, um, you know, the Cobb's Cabin Band might be able to use. So, yeah, I'm going to revisit some of that old stuff, sure. So what would you say is your genre of music? Is it is uh, it ballads? Is it country? Is it folk? Is it a little fusion of all that? Um, it's, a hint I, of blues in there? Well, um, I could say that it it's a conglomeration of everything that... Uh, I like and that I've been influenced by from uh, classical to jazz to rock, of course, country. I mean, I play a little banjo and mandolin as well. Um, but the uh, there's always been a twang to, to my guitar playing. You know, even when I play rock, there seems to be like a twang factor. So I would say I've been most heavily influenced by country. I used to, uh, I don't I, uh, I'll, I can admit it. Now, I used to cut class sometimes to um, to go home and catch a ra- some radio shows from WBAI. They used to have uh, all this great country music, and I would record it on the cassette player with the microphone next to the speaker. Because that was the only way to do it. Yeah, that was the only <laughs> way to do it. Uh, so I would say country, but um, if, if you want to play another tune sure. here, uh, number eight, which is called Another Face in the Crowd... It's it's swing jazzy, and uh, and there's um, uh, kind of a cute story uh, attached to it. It's uh, it's about a guy who wins the New York State lottery, and uh, I I think that uh, it came about because um, uh, a lottery they 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 interviewed one of the lottery winners and he says yeah all of a sudden like you know everybody wants a handout all my relatives are coming out of the woodwork and I think that's what triggered this this song. She never looked at me when I was just a no one. Her second glance would never fall on me. But she hangs on now like she was gonna fall off And I don't think that she'll ever set me free I was just an average guy who no one looked at Just a faceless personality But I've suddenly become the number one boy Since I won the New York State Lottery Another face in the crowd becomes a mister
Now, what's interesting about that song is you may want to call the New York State Lottery Commission and see if they want to use it in their, you know, ads. <laughs> the funny thing is, I did send them a copy, and they got back to me. They said everybody loved it, but they didn't know what to do with it. Well, let's put it this way. Uh, on all their commercials on various commercial platforms, commercial radio, commercial mm-hmm. television, I don't know. they they got to use their imagination a little bit. Yeah. All right, so we only have three minutes left. Oh, what 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 would you like to share with with people who now that they're kind of getting to know you? Mm-hmm. Is there any other stories, any other fun stuff, any insights, anecdotes, uh, reflections that you want to share with people? Well, that's uh, you know, in general, uh, you know, there's nothing particular comes to mind except uh, that you know for the um, the people that, that, that do play and the people that are aspiring to be successful in whatever it is that, you know, they want to do, I would, uh, I would encourage them to, uh, you know, don't let go of whatever the dream is that you have and don't let anybody talk you out of it. If you know in your heart that, this, that whatever it is is what you want to do and that's going to make you happy. I would tell you go for it. You know, you know we're uh, we're older cats. You know, and we're just now starting to become successful. And it's because we just stuck with it because we love doing this. I mean, we've been playing since we're in our you know teens, and you know uh, now we're uh, decades older. I don't want to say how many, but um, more than one. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> But um, we stuck with it, and, and, and now it's, it's starting to pay off, and, you know, we're getting a little reputation in uh, the Hudson Valley, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, people will come out and see us, uh, and, uh, um, you know, maybe even uh, buy a copy of the album, which is, I think, still on iTunes, Amazon, and even CD Baby for a physical copy. And it's nice having the physical copy, if you ask me, because you got something you can hold. There's a little artwork there. And you get the artist to autograph it. <laughs> oh, I'd be very happy to, sure, you bet. Yeah, you know, you know it's, what's sad is uh, the newer cars don't have CD players. Mm. I, I, I was astonished to find out that the, the recent cars just assume that you're going to just take your phone, plug it into a port, and that's where your music's going to come from. I, I actually, I, I like CDs, especially at my father's place, because so many bands come that are not necessarily known to us, especially, mm-hmm. you know, the openers and things like that. And yet, we were so impressed with some of the performances. We bought EPs, you know, CDs, mm-hmm. the whole bit. And then you play them in the car on the way home, and it's sort of like, you know, the it's whole great. thing. And yeah. You yeah. know, I, I, I like the physical thing where you can actually have something to hold. You know, it used to be LPs when we were kids and 45s. Um, I think there's something missing there uh, when you don't have it. I'll tell you, it, it, this was a very fast hour of radio. I enjoyed all the music. Oh, thank thanks. you for making it. Uh, I'm sure PS209, 194 and Bayside <laughs> will be very proud to know that they have a very cool alumni out there. Oh, and uh, it's just uh, it's... CobbsCabinBand.com. Uh, you have a phone number, 845-476-3336. Yeah. But if you don't have any of that information and you're driving, just call us at the station. We always forward emails. In fact, we just forwarded an email today about Brother Mustard, which, which was on a whole bunch of years ago because there's some super fans. Mm-hmm. We're out of time. We'll see you next week.